Well, let's go get in the chisel plow tractor and tear up some ground. Well, I just finished up chiseling and it just started raining, so perfect timing. Now, I don't just mean finished with the field I was working on, I mean finished. We are done with this piece of equipment for 2022. Well, I've got a nice load of the good stuff on and I'm headed out to the field. I hope it's not too muddy. see we are picking up just a little dirt on the front tires I wish it wasn't quite this tacky out here but I really need to get this done we're gonna probably have to bring the cows home towards the middle of the end of next week because it's supposed to get really really cold outside I'm afraid the creek might freeze over and they won't have anywhere to drink water so before that happens we need to get them brought home get them settled in for the winter One thing I love about this manure spreader is that the apron is driven hydraulically and you can control the speed of the apron from a switch inside the cab. What this allows you to do is to stop the beaters but leave the apron running to clean it out at the end. A lot of manure spreaders drive that apron off of the same drive shaft that runs the beaters so you can't run the apron without running the beaters which is normally fine but when you really want to clean it out the beaters continually kick manure back into the front of the manure spreader and the chain apron is bringing it back to the back and then the beaters are kicking it back to the front. So it's great to be able to shut those beaters off and run that apron for a while and get everything nice and clean. Well, it's probably not the best wrapping job that's ever been done, but it's the first time I've ever done it. So you'll have to cut me just a little bit of slack. We wanted to try wrapping our cornstalk bales this year so that we could keep them from getting all frozen. When they're outside in the freezing rain and the snow, they don't make very good bedding. The outside six inches of the top of the bale usually gets all slabbed up and frozen and these will work a lot better for feed and for bedding plus it'll be a lot easier to get the net wrap off of them and we've freed up a lot of space in the barn anyway i thought it was worth a try we'll see if we like it or not ultimately i really want to build a hoop shed here that's big enough to store our hay and corn stalk bales in the one end and bed the cows down in the other end hey i gotta show you a couple of really cool things about this bale wrapper so first check out the hitch so right now the hitch is in the wrapping position. It folds up like this and you stick this pin through here and that way the machine can steer itself. But then when you pull the hitch pin out, then you can fold the hitch back out like this and stick the pin through here and you can tow it down the road behind your pickup. So when the pin is in here, watch this. So we've also got all the controls on the panel here for driving it forward, driving it backwards, steering it. When I put it in automatic mode and I'm using the remote, there's a sensor over there and a sensor over here. As soon as you set that bale on, it automatically starts wrapping. It worked really good. We got all these bales wrapped last night. I wasn't really able to do a detailed explanation. I was in a big hurry. It was actually supposed to start raining and snowing, so I needed to get all that done. But here's some footage of wrapping bales in the dark last night.
So we're going to be loading the cows up and bringing them home soon. And it's very important that we're able to get them into the corral and get every one of them in, because otherwise we can't bring them all home. Sometimes it's hard to get them to all want to come in. So today is what I like to call a practice day. No pressure, we didn't have to get them in today. And we got most of them in. There was only one cow that never came in. It's important for them to have a good experience coming into the corral a few times before you actually need to get them in. Because if every time you get them in is some sort of stressful event, they'll remember that and they'll never wanna come in. So like I say, today's a practice day. All I did was feed them, hang out with them a little bit. Now I'm gonna leave them alone and let them clean up the rest of that hay. We'll do this for a few days and then hopefully They'll get in the routine and we can get them easily loaded up to bring home. I know it doesn't look all that deep yet, but I've already got a whole wheelbarrow of dirt and almost 100 gallons of dirt in this water tank. I don't know if I'm halfway there yet. Well, I got to the bottom of the hydrant. It was way down there. And it turns out that this fitting on the bottom of the hydrant was actually the problem. I don't think it was the hydrant at all. But if you look at this 45 right here, it's on there cross-threaded, really cross-threaded. And when I had Kaylee turn the water on in the basement of the house to feed water to this while I was down in the hole, the water was just shooting right out of this fitting here all the time. So that's obviously why it was freezing up last winter was because the water was just being pushed up all the time and kind of raising the water table down in the hole. And so the pipe couldn't drain the way it's supposed to to make the frost free hydrant work so this is kind of concerning to me you can just barely see the water line down there and it's under about eight inches of water right now and i'm just wondering where that water's coming from if the ground's just still so saturated here and i don't know why it would be now we have basically been shutting the water off in the basement of the house after we get done watering the heifers every single time for about the last six months but i suppose it might just be leaking enough water out while we're using it there was so much water in here that i'm pretty sure that even if i just fill this whole bottom underneath here with gravel it's still just going to fill up above the water line i i don't even know what to do now i did decide i wanted to replace the hydrant anyway because it was such a nightmare getting all this dirt dug out of there i don't want to have to go through this again now this is not completely done yet the new hydrant is installed i've got plywood over the hole and I've got it covered in bales right now to keep insulated. But we are running water through the new hydrant. And I'm very happy with how it's working. Well, it's hard to believe that it's already trucking season. But here we are. I'm getting loaded right now to go to town to the ethanol plant with a load of corn. We've got a, quite a bit of corn to get to town in the month of December before the end of the year rolls around. I've got some data to share with you while I'm sitting here getting loaded. I've got the iPad. And here in front of me, I've got all of the numbers for the Reveal Row Cleaner trial. Remember this spring, on half of the planter, we had the brand new Reveal Row Cleaners from Precision Planting. On the other half of the planter, we had floating Martin Row Cleaners with clean sweep cylinders attached to them. So eight rows of each. Our combine takes eight rows when we harvest. So that means we were able to split out all the data. So across all of our corn acres this year, we had 1.46 bushel positive impact per acre with the Reveal Row Cleaners. Now that might not seem like a lot, but in reality, if you took out one 80 acre field, it would have been over two bushels to the acre difference. I had one field that for whatever reason was negative 4.4. That was a no-till field with rye cover crop. And I know it was too wet when we were planting there. And it was probably the way that I had them set that made it actually worse. I wasn't really moving any residue because I was trying to stay towards the top of the soil profile where it wasn't as wet. What I was doing was I was running that gauge wheel on the row cleaners quite a lot lower so that the row cleaners were just barely tickling the top of the ground. That's something you're not able to do with the Martin floating row cleaners because there's a treader wheel that stops you from going too deep and you can't adjust the depth at all. All you can do is pressure up or pressure down. So I was kind of fiddling around trying to see what I could do to stay out of the mud and I think what happened was I just left way too much residue in the furrow and then that residue dried out way quicker than the ground did and we had some uneven emergence because of that. 
But nonetheless, that's the data. That's what actually happened. So we have to leave that big negative number in there. But even at 1.46 bushels per acre, we made enough money back at $6 corn to completely pay for the Reveal Row Cleaner system in the first year. Overall, looking back, I feel like planting season went really well this year. That was really the only challenging conditions we had planting corn. Some of the soybeans went in a little bit wetter than I would have wanted them to, but overall it was a great planting season. All the equipment worked pretty well. You might remember I got the tractor stuck. But other than that, everything went great. It was a smooth planting season. Next year we're gonna run this row cleaner trial one more time because I feel like every year is different than the year before it. I wanna see how things go next year. But so far, super promising numbers on the Reveal Row Cleaner system. And I'm excited about planting next year. But you know what? It's still four months away at least. So I'm gonna have to hold on to that excitement a little bit. So I just stopped to grab some fuel in the Freightliner and I feel like I need to explain why I've been pretty much absent on YouTube, actually 100% absent on YouTube for a month now. You see, a little over three weeks ago, my wife had shoulder surgery. She had a torn labrum and she got that repaired. She's in a sling for six weeks, only able to use one hand. And I am just now realizing how much my wife does because right now I'm doing a lot of it. Now normally when I'm home late at night, that's when I'm editing these videos. They don't just make themselves. I have to sit down and spend a fair amount of time editing all the footage down into what you're watching right now. And usually I do that late at night after everybody else in the house has gone to bed. But I have been so doggone tired after getting my work done and then getting a lot of Tina's stuff done that she would normally be doing that I can't even stay awake to edit. So that ultimately is why I've been gone for about a month. She's getting around a lot better now. She's figured out how to do a lot of stuff with one hand. So here I am with a YouTube video. It'll only get better from here, I'm sure. So thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Sorry I haven't been here for a month. That's just the way it is sometimes. I appreciate you hanging out. I'll see you next time.